This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Preflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. God is so far from the thought of repayment. You know, you are, you being good, so he's going to do something good to you to pay you for being good. That has, that is not his way. That has never been his way. But us humans have kind of made it like that. And his way is much higher than that. The West Coast was the first stop, and they did not disappoint. And East Coast, you're up next. Change is coming to New York City. Are you ready for the revival? Join Creflo Dollar on April 26th for the 2024 Change Experience Tour. Prepare for transformative sessions, amazing worship, and genuine fellowship with other believers. Text CHANGE2024 to 51555. Visit CreflodollarMinistries.org or scan the QR code on your screen. Change starts now. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We sing by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We started this some weeks back. We talked about God's ways versus man's ways. And we have to know this because we keep trying to bring God down on our level. <laughs> and he ain't coming. He came down on our level when he bought Jesus. Yeah. Who was touched with the feelings of our infirmities but not so we can stay at that level, but to come up to where we need to be. And so, I need you to listen, man. I need you to listen. I, let, let me start off with this. It's one of the things God instructed me to begin to do everywhere I go. Life, once you get born again, you get on a journey. Life is a journey. Life, that spiritual life, your saved life, is a journey. I, I may have mentioned this to you before, but it's like if you take a road trip from Atlanta to L.A., it's on a, you're on a journey, okay? And there will be different things that may come up on that journey. You might be on your way to L.A. and take a wrong turn, and you're, 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 you're off the path, and it may take some time to get back on the path. You may be on your way to L.A. from Atlanta, and you're going to have to have a pit stop. You might have to stop and get some gas or a tire. There, there are a lot of things that could happen on the way to the journey. But nobody is there to condemn you to hell just because you took a wrong turn, just because you had a flat tire, just because it was necessary for you to get a refill. Nobody's going to condemn you to hell. And yet, as Christian people, we don't understand that this life is a journey. And on this journey, you're going to fall, you're going to say the wrong things, you're going to make the... But that doesn't mean condemn them because the journey continues. And you know what's great about the journey? Is Jesus is going on a road trip with you. Not to beat you up, but to say to you, okay, I got you. Let's get back on the journey here. Oh, okay, no problem. You need a refill? I'll go ahead and fill you up again. You, you, need a, you, need a, uh, you need your wheels aligned? I'll line you up. You, you're out of balance? I'll give you a balance. There's nothing wrong with all of, any, all of all the stuff that happens in our lives on this journey. It's like God says, that's, that, that's the stuff that's to be expected on the journey. Why do we get on this journey and don't expect for anything to show up on the journey? So it's all right. You don't spend two years in condemnation because you had to fill up. You don't spend 10 years in shame because you, you had a flat tire. 
you're going to get flat tires on journeys. But it's okay because Jesus is your road dog. No, 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 you know, the, the dog part, God, just an illustration, you know. <laughs> Forgive me, Jesus. <laughs> we got to start thinking like that. So what happens sometimes is in real life, you mess up. It took you probably 30 minutes to mess that up, and you spend 10 years being condemned by it. He says, stop doing that. You're on a journey. We still got a ways to go. Nobody has time for you to sit at the rest station for a week. Nobody has time for you to sit there pitying yourself for another week. You had the flat tire, change the tire, and get back on the road. You might be tired, take a nap, get back on the road. That's how life is. So shake off all the things you've encountered and thank God that today you are still on this journey. Yeah. You're still on this journey. So stop beating yourself up. Stop, stop beating yourself up and stop beating one another up. <sighs> That's how God's looking at it. You're on a journey. Your kid first start walking. Your kid's going to fall. That's what happens on the journey of learning how to walk. When he falls, you don't beat his brains out and speak all kinds of crazy stuff to him. You ain't no good. You fail. Now, don't fall no more. If you fall, I'm like, nobody does that. Everybody understands this is for a time. You wear pepper for a time. How many of you know there's a problem if you're still wearing a pepper and you're 21? <laughs> you're on a journey. Now, God has a way of doing things. And human mankind, natural man, has a way of doing things. And we need to see the difference because too many times we're coming up with ways of saying, God, just like this. No. Look what he says here. Romans 55, verse 8 and 9. Isaiah, thank you. <laughs> you can tell I'm excited. <laughs> For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, Heaven's ways are higher than the earth. God's ways are higher than your ways. He says, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And there is no instance in that's, that this is more true than in the connection with promptings to proper conduct. There's no instance where this is more true than in connection uh, to proper conduct. So we look at your conduct and you look at how you have chosen to conduct, conduct and carry yourself and God is saying, my ways are higher than your ways where this is concerned because under grace, God does everything apart from human merit. When I use the word merit, I'm, it, it, it really means being good to deserve a reward. So, so God does, under grace, everything apart from uh, influencing you to, uh, to, 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 to do something in order to deserve uh, a reward. And so, under grace, he does everything apart from that. He's not doing anything. Under grace, uh, he does everything apart from any thought of repayment. So God, under grace, is not trying to do something because you've been good, so you deserve a reward. We may not do that. I'm going to be good so I can deserve a reward. God is so far from that. God is so far from 
the thought of repayment. You know, you are, you being good, so he's going to do something good to you to pay you for being good. That has, that is not his way. That has never been his way. But us humans have kind of made it like that. And his way is much higher than that. Mm. He cannot offer his blessing as an inducement or influencing someone to do something. He can't offer his blessing. He can't say, I'm going to bless you if you do this. He, 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 he's not saying, he can't say, I'm going to bless you if you're good. He cannot say, I'm going to bless you if your behavior lines up right, then I'll and bless you. God, God can't do that. His blessings, he cannot offer his blessing as an inducement, nor can he offer his judgment as a threat to encourage godly living. So he wants you to, you, he wants you to live godly, but he can't use the blessing to get you to live godly, and he can't use judgment to threaten you to live godly. He can't do it. And I am telling you, all my life, I'm thinking that's how it worked. I go to church this Sunday, God going to repay me by letting me get a raise. How many of y'all thought that? Raise your hands or, or come up here and let me cast that line devil at you. <laughs> and I guess that's why it's taking me so long to preach this, because this goes against everything that we heard about God. Now, it is true that what I just said is true for humans. If you do good, I'm going to do something to reward you. If you do good, then I'm going to repay you for doing good. That's, that's our way. But What's going to happen now? I'm going to judge you if you don't do good. Didn't we do that with our kids? If you, if you, if you, if, if you, act, if you act right in school, I'm going to do you good. But I'm going to threaten you if you don't act right in school. That's our way. And somehow we have made our way God's way. And that ain't God's way. Ooh, Jesus. Everybody on, still on the bus with me now. We, you're still on the bus with me. You're still on the bus with me. All right. Therefore, under grace, under grace, God first reminds us of what he has done in grace. And then on the basis of that, he, he, he appeals for a life of, of godliness with that in mind. In other words, God, God has this work of grace. He reminds us of, of his grace, and he reminds us of his mercy. And then he makes an appeal for us to live godly, but not without us understanding his work of grace. Let, let, let me show you the, the phrase that God gave me to, to, to pull all this together. It may help you. I wrote it down. I was so excited about it. I signed my name just in case I leave it back and hundreds of years later, so nobody else won't have to struggle with what I'm getting ready to, to preach, and it's no longer a struggle, but here's what he said. God will not make an appeal. When I, when I use the word appeal, he won't appeal to you to, to, to say, all right, you need to live godly, or, or, or all right, you need to present your body uh, uh, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. All right, you need to treat everybody. That, that's what I refer to as an appeal. So I, I'm going to use the word appeal this morning, the appeals that God make. He appeals to you to live holy, appeals to you to do right, appeals to you to do that. But, but he, he never appeals to you. Here's what he says. God will not make an appeal without first providing mercy and grace for our failures. Oh, boy. So, so what, 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 he's, what he means there is, I'm not asking you to live right until I, first of all, have a work of mercy and grace for when you don't live right that day. 
So now all of a sudden, you're not too afraid to accept that appeal because the threat of me not being able to do it has been taken away because he said, before I ask you to live godly, notice my mercy and grace is at every beginning of every appeal that I have asked you. So I went and checked that out. I said, oh, yeah, and I started seeing it. I saw how we skipped, we skipped the mercy and grace part and went straight to the appeal. Live godly. But God says, no, no, no. I won't ever request for you to do anything without, first of all, recognizing my work of grace in being able to ask you to live this way. So don't be afraid that you can't live this way because I've already worked this thing out for your bad days. Oh. Now, yeah, I know, I know. I got my handkerchief. I got my handkerchief here. Ain't, ain't, ain't time. We're gonna cry in a minute, baby. I got, I got one for you. <laughs> All right, now watch this now. But man's ways are not God's ways. In general, man clings to the idea that benefits always come because of good conduct, and man's ways are that losses come because of bad conduct. So man's ways are, all right, these good things showed up because we did something good. Uh, this bad thing showed up because we did something bad. That's man's way. Losses and rewards based on our conduct with no consideration of the grace and mercy that has been put in this place. Natural man always feels that he must contribute something to earn God's favor. That's what church has been like for some of you for the last 10, 20, 30 years. Natural man, natural man saying, and based on church, and based on pulpit, and based on sermons, natural man says, I've got to contribute something in order to get God's favor. And if I don't contribute something, I can't get God's favor. <gasps> in, in, in the pulpits of the world, this is what you have to contribute to get God's favor. But you have to understand, you did not contribute anything at the beginning of God's favor. God's favor was God's idea, not mine, not yours. Hallelujah. Think about this. Think about always thinking, I've got to contribute something. I've got to go. I think it, it, it's, it's, it, it so contradicts everything. If you have to contribute something to get God's favor, it's not favor. How is it favor if you had something to do with getting it? It's not. I, I contributed nothing to get born again, except I believed. I believed this way. A lot of gifts that you're walking in now, you keep trying to find where your contribution made this happen. That's right. That is not God's way. Amen. It's man's way. God's method under grace is seen in Jesus dealing with that woman taken in adultery. Let's look at that. John chapter 8, verses 3 through 11. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. I mean, in the very act of adultery. They bought the woman sheets and all. <laughs> Ain't no, we think she in adultery. And when they had set her in the mist, they say unto him, Jesus, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now, because they're, they're trying to trick Jesus, because Jesus is supposed to be there fulfilling the law. And according to the law, this should be this woman's last day. 
Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. Well, what do you say? They're trying to trip Jesus up. Watch him. This is why he's my king. <laughs> this they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. He was egging them. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't got time for this tomfoolery. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, okay? And I like this because he can't go against the law because he had come to deliver people from the law and he couldn't deliver them from the law unless he operated and fulfilled all the law. So what do you say? So he didn't say don't stone her. Here's what he said. He lifted up himself and said unto him, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And he again stooped down and wrote on the ground. Somebody said, do you know what he was writing? No, I don't know what he was writing. And you don't either. So don't get, don't get up and get a preach. Don't, don't get up and preach a sermon talking about what Jesus was writing, you know, the day that he would return. No, you don't know. He, he might have been doodling. Because that's what you do when people talk in tomfoolery. You're just like, mm. He says, all right, fine. I'm not telling you not to stone her. Here's all I'm saying. Anybody, any, any one of you who don't have sin in your life, go ahead. And the Bible says the older people left first because they knew they had a whole bunch going on. <laughs> the older people just got on out of there like, man, let me, let me go. On. The younger people thought they had hope, but they eventually left too. And they which had heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, they went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, and Jesus left her alone. And the woman, standing in his midst, when Jesus had left, lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, woman, where are those thine accusers? Had no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. Jesus said unto her, watch this, neither do I condemn thee. This sin of adultery will not condemn you. What you did deserved death and condemnation. You should have been condemned to death because you broke the law, and the law said you should be condemned to death. But in a sense, he said, but mercy has come before you today. Amen. Jesus, full of grace and truth. And I forgive you. Now take this mercy and this grace that you've received today and go and sin no more because grace has come unto you. Amen. Now it's possible for her to actually walk without sinning and doing this again because before there was no mercy and grace. There was just the threat of death. And people telling you, you're going to hell for this, and you're going to hell for that. But now I see mercy, I see grace, I see Jesus. I see that I can do what I didn't think I was able to do before because his way showed up and he reversed what was supposed to happen under the law. Huh. And that same thing going on today. We still trying to send folks to hell when we catch them and stuff. 
Do you know who God really is? In Creflo Dollar's four-part series, The Truth About God's Ways, he highlights who God is and how his unique nature sets us free. Under grace, God does everything apart from human merit. Under grace, God first reminds us of what he has done in grace. By grace, you're already righteous. By grace, you're already perfect. By grace, you're already holy. And now that you can see that it's available to you by grace, then I'm going to try to appeal to you to live a life in harmony with what grace has already done. This four message series is available for a love gift of 25 US dollars or more for CDs or 35 US dollars or more for DVDs. To receive this series and discover God's loving nature, call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore today. How many know when God begins to swoop down, things begin to happen, the impossible becomes possible? Miraculous things began to happen. There is nothing that is too messy. There's nothing that is too dirty that he cannot change. Connect with a community of like-minded women who are on a similar path of growth and success. Be fresh, be bold, be empowered. Be at Bloom Radical Women's Conference 2024. You're invited to unlock your harvest with Taffy Dollar, Dr. Anita Phillips, and more on March 14th and 15th. Don't wait for permission to bloom. It's time for you to fulfill your purpose and receive all that you've worked for. Seats are limited, so grab your friends and text RADICAL to 51555 or visit taffydollar.org now. Are you ready to bloom? Everything in God's kingdom works by faith. Now, I remember when Taffy and I started giving it was a painful thing to give because we didn't have much at all financially. However, we made a decision to be givers. And one of the most quoted scriptures in the Bible is John 3:16, God so loved the world that he gave. Therefore, as Christians, we give. Our giving is an expression of our love. And when you support Creflo Dollar Ministries financially, you are giving to our efforts to spread the gospel all over the world. And in addition to helping millions who are hurting and have vital physical needs, pray about what God would have you to show at this time. We want to thank you in advance for your support. To support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.